All right, let's talk about beeping out curse words. So today we're going to talk about beeping out curse words. We're going to talk about a few different ways to do it. We're going to talk about things to consider while beeping out curse words. So let's just dig right into it. So what I have here is I have a track already set up. This is actually routed to my talkback mic here. So let me just drag that over here and flip it on. And so what I want to do to start is I want to just really quick record some audio. So this is a flipping curse word. Cool. So that's what we're going to work with. So here's my audio. Let's find the flipping. This is a flipping curse word. Flipping. <laughs> okay, so flipping. That's flipping, right? So I'm going to break it out. I have beat a break just so we can kind of see where flipping is. So one thing you can do is you can highlight the section that you want to beep out and you can use the shortcut. So it's option, control, shift, and then three. And so what that'll do is it'll generate a one kilohertz tone at negative 20 decibels. Or that's what I believe it is. Let's listen. Cool. So now it's this. So this is a curse word. Cool. And one thing to consider, I actually ran into this recently and it was driving me crazy, but I was listening to something. I forget what I was listening to. And it seemed like they had the beep like really loud, like they had generated it maybe some other way and it was kind of loud. Um, maybe it was, I don't know, something like this. So that when I was listening so that everything else was at a good level, this was ear splittingly loud. So you want to make sure that it's not too loud. This actually feels kind of balanced to me. This is a f curse word. But that's probably why the default in Pro Tools is to have it generate at negative 20 decibels. Let's actually look. I'm going to do command equals. Let's see what it's at. Yeah, it's at negative 20. So there it is. And so you notice how like my audio peaks at, I think it was negative two. This is a f curse word. So my audio is peaking at negative 1.2 decibels. And this is peaking much lower at negative 20. So it feels balanced when the beep is much quieter than the rest of the audio. So just keep that in mind. Do not make it too loud. So again, the shortcut for that is you highlight the range you want to beep out and it's option, control, shift, and then three. And I believe that's like what alt home shift three on Windows. I think that's how it translates. But let me know in the comments below if that's not correct. I think that's how it translates to Windows. So that's one way to beep a curse word. That's how I'd recommend doing it. But you can also do things the more manual way using a signal generator, right? So you can either set up a track and put a signal generator plugin on your track and then you can you know route things so that you can record it easily or another thing you can do is you can go to audio suite and go to other here and then oops go down to signal generator. And this comes with Pro Tools. And so you'll notice here that the default is 1000 Hertz, right? So one kilohertz at negative 20 decibels. So that's the same thing. So let's hit render here and it creates the same thing for us. So if you forget that shortcut, you can always just, you know, highlight a range of time, go to Audio Suite, find that signal generator plugin, and then create it this way. And you can create different types of signal here as well. So you can make noise, right? You can generate a square wave. You can change the frequency if you want. You know, you can kind of mess with it. But the the standard way to beep out a curse word is the one kilohertz. So that's kind of the standard way to do things. Another thing you could do is you could use samples, right? So I could go find something, some kind of sample. So maybe I'll go for like a horn honk or something. And you can find one. And then you can drag it in. Create my own track here. Usually when I use something like a sound effect, let me switch to slip mode here. Um, what I will do, and let me drag this out all the way here, is I'll put the sound effect on a different track and I'll find it and kind of overlay it. This is a flipping, right? So I'll like kind of line it up with the word flipping. And then what I will do is I will break this out and mute it. So you still have it if you want to bring it back in for like a different version per se. Like maybe you want a version that's not censored and a version that is censored. You can do that. This is a f curse word. Right. You can do something like that. If you want, you can play with bringing in the end of the word, too. And you probably want to add fades. Oops, I'm holding command as if I'm in the grid mode because I'm used to being in grid mode for music. This is a f curse word. So you can do that, you know, add your little fades, but mute it. And then you can have a version that is censored and a version that's not censored. Right. And I'm going to add fades here, too. So I'm just clicking and dragging with the smart tool there to add fades. 
So that's another way you can do things is you can bring in any kind of sound effect. People have a lot of fun with it. Sometimes I've done like animal noises, horn honks. You know, there's all kinds of noises you can do, like bell sounds. You can do lots of silly, fun sounds and kind of depends on the context, you know, what you might choose. But that's a fun way to do it. I would keep in mind if you're doing this and it's for something like a film, you know, if there's not like a bunch of music behind it, for example, then you might want to put room tone in here where this is muted, right? So you might want another track with room tone that's just in this section here so that it doesn't feel like there's as much negative space there. I don't do that if it's music because there's a ton of music underneath, so you're not going to notice the lack of the room tone necessarily. But if you're working on something like a film, it might be more likely that you would want to bring in room tone. So that's something to consider. And you know, that kind of brings in the idea of inserting silence instead of another sound effect, right? So if I mute this, I'm going to do command M to mute it. We can hear what it sounds like just with the silence. This is a curse word right so you might want to do something like that sometimes if it's a really quick curse word that works really well and again you know if you're working on something like a film where there isn't anything underneath the vocals the spoken word the whatever it is then you might want to put in some room tone instead of just muting this but that's just another thing you can play with is the idea of having negative space instead of the beep and then the last idea that i want to share for this how to handle curse words situation is the idea of bringing in a word from another spot in the project. So I'm not gonna show how to do that, right? You would just take, for example, let me just duplicate this. Maybe I will kind of show it here. <laughs> but what you could do is, for example, if you have a word that might fit in that spot, you could copy it and then paste it in here. So I zoom in here on my curse word, I can then do Command V and paste that word. And then I'd wanna trim it out, you know? And you find a word that kind of fits in the space. You could drag stuff out depending on how married you are to the timeline, right? But uh, the idea is you could take a word from elsewhere in the project and paste it in there and see how it fits, how it feels. That's a great one for music. You know, if you sometimes people will make clean versions that have a different, a completely different word in there. And maybe you record that separately while you're tracking or maybe you paste it in from somewhere else in the project. That's a really great way to handle it. So you can paste in words. You can also, I'm going to do Command Z to undo that paste. Another idea is you can take, for example, like the beginning of the curse word. So I'm going to break this out and actually drag this out. So you might take the beginning of the curse word and I'm going to actually tab and get rid of my fade here. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the trim tool and I'm going to go to TCE which is time compression and expansion. And I can drag this out and make it like slowed down, right? So you can make some kind of weird edit of the word, maybe like a slowed down version or something like that. This is a flip curse word. Right, that one's kind of weird. I, I don't think I'd keep that there, but you could, you could mangle the word up until people get the idea of what the word is, but they don't actually hear the curse word. So that's a fun way to mess with things. And I would just experiment with it, you know? And you can use this TCE tool to stretch stuff. You can use the time compression and expansion, audio suite plugin, that's a good one to use for that. And then you could also experiment with other effects to kind of mask the word or change the word. I would just make sure that it's not actually under there and it's not something that it, it is audible in so, to some level. You know, you don't want to be on the wrong side of the line if, if you're supposed to be censoring something here. So yeah, let me know if you've done something like this that you really like, that you find fun, because I that's kind of a new thing that I've been experimenting with is if someone wants me to censor a word, is, is, it, is, it, is there a way to do a fun edit that makes it, gets rid of the curse word, but you still get a sense of what the curse word is, right? So yeah, let me know in the comments below if you have a fun idea for that. Other than that, that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about today. So I think it's a bit of a shorty video. Thanks so much for hanging out. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. I have a Patreon. It's patreon.com slash noise. And my patrons get access to additional content. We have a Discord server we're hanging out on. We have a book club on the Discord server that meets on Sundays. And we have some additional content on my website and early release videos as well as I make them. So if that sounds like something that interests you, please check that out. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. And it supports this channel and helps keep it independent. So thank you so much to my Patreon patrons. Trends. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I got some new squishy toys for the studio. So I got this squishy donut. And I had one before that was just like this. And I really liked it. And what happened was eventually this part broke and the fluid came out. So I had to go get a new one. So I got, 
<laughs> the same exact one again. And then I also got this company has like a gummy bear one that I got. And I have been I was like reading a book and I brought it down to the house. That's why it's not up here. But I've just been like squishing it. And it's really satisfying. I really like this while people are tracking. It helps me focus on the tracking if I'm like sitting there listening and just kind of doing this. It's weird, but it really helps me focus. I guess I can put a link to it if anyone wants to see it. Um, I don't know. I'll put it in the description or something. Okay, bye.